Hi. Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> my name is Ray Murphy. Um, this is my team from Koru Canine. Um, this is a random dog that we use for the show. Um, this is my wife, Bridget. My trainer, Jillian, Jenny, and Caroline. Um, today, we're going to have, um, this is our very first show, by the way. We're going to kind of go over a few things. Uh, one being, you just got yourself a new dog. What do you do next? All right, a lot of people do this on impulse. They go to the pond, they find the perfect little puppy or dog, and they bring them home, and they're like, what the heck do I do now, okay? Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about setting up some proper rules, structure, boundaries. Um, I do encourage you guys out there to please ask questions. This is an interactive session. Um, I want to go over how, uh, how to set up your environment, any questions you may have regarding uh, leash handling, um, how, to, how do I get some rules in place, and then we can kind of go from there. So please, at any point, please log into the, the show, and we're going to go from there. Okay? All right. So, brought home a new dog. One of the very first things I want to accomplish is, you know, where am I going to put this dog? Do I want to just let him have free reign in my house? Do I want my house rearranged for me by a new dog? Um, the answer to that is we want to restrict their movement. Um, one of the first things we can do is crate training, okay? Um, a lot of people out there are kind of unsure about crate training. They think they're putting their doggy in puppy prison. Uh, one of the things you got to remember is dogs are den animals. They like to have their own spot to go chill out. And if you introduce a crate properly, uh, dogs actually enjoy being in there. What that's going to do for you is going to help you a lot with potty training. It's going to help you out from uh, getting your couch chewed apart. And when you're setting the dogs up for success, then we won't have problems in the future. So with crate training, there's some steps behind it. Um, what I want to make sure you guys understand is when we, do, when we bring a dog home, I don't want to shove them into a crate and make this a traumatic experience. You want to make it a place where they want to be. Um, what I want to do is I want to um, cut over to one of my trainers and what we're going to do is we're going to show you guys how to properly introduce the crate as a command so they understand how to go in and out and then how we can utilize that. Okay? Uh, Jillian, do we have uh, Dexter queued up? Yes! All right. So uh, my trainer Jillian here is going to show you what a dog that already knows how to do this um, looks like to get into their crate. She's basically going to lead him up to the edge. She leads him up to the edge of the crate. She's going to issue the command. She's going to pause, issue the command, go into your crate or kennel. And the dog knows when he steps in there, he's in the right spot. Okay. Now, this is the one thing that a lot of people don't do when they come home. They're excited to see their dog and the dog's excited to see them. They open the door and the dog shoots out like he's shot out of a cannon. Okay. We want to teach this dog a little bit of impulse control, meaning if a door is open, I don't necessarily need to get to run through. Secondly, I want him waiting for commands from his owner to tell him when it is appropriate to come out. So when he releases the dog, what I want him to do is go ahead and open the door. There'll be a pause. If your dog tries to charge through, you'll just basically close the door right back on him again. So open. And then you'll give him a release. Say, so, okay. Perfect. And that's how you're going to do it in a perfect world. So this dog has already learned how to do this. Um, Jillian also um, is a foster mom to a dog, a rather large pit bull named Hank. Um, she's had him for a day. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to show you or we're going to show you how it's going to look for a dog that doesn't necessarily know how to do this right away. Okay. Um, do we have any questions so far? Is everything making sense? Okay, if you guys have any questions out there, please feel free to join the conversation so we can uh, include you and uh, get you involved in what's going on here. Okay, this will take a second or two to set up. We're bringing him in right now. We got the big boy queued up. Okay. All right, so he is a uh, good 80 plus pounds of muscle and he's full of energy so uh, getting him in here this first time or two might be a challenge but I want to show you guys what you might be up against when you're out there for real so when guys are really excitable like that again we want to be super calm um, let them know that this is a cool place to be when they go in there another thing you can do when you're dealing with a crate is actually uh, play some music you can cover the blanket make it real den like play some music in the background they go in there they just chill out that's their zen spot okay so we got Hank queued up so Hank's coming up. We're going to bring him right up to the edge of the crate, right at the edge of the threshold. Okay. 
and pause. And then go ahead and issue that command and guide him in there. Good. And then when he goes in the prison, you can kind of close the door if you want. So this is going to be a new challenge for him. So we're going to open the crate door. Now this is where we're going to teach him that impulse control. When we open that door, I don't want him shot out of a cannon. I want him basically waiting for a release, which is okay to come out. So she's going to open the door slowly at first. If you see him starting to shoot through, you could close it. If not, wait for a pause and release. Good, because when you bring a dog out like that with control, you're going to see less of kind of a crazy reaction when they're out of the crate. Okay, so again, main reason we're using crate training, um, so you don't have a dog uh, peeing and pooping all over your house. Um, and also you don't give them the opportunity to chew up things that you know are inappropriate because you're not there to correct it. Okay, so when the dog builds up your trust over time, you can choose to continue with the crate, the crate or you can give them free freedom as they earn it. Okay, um, some of the other things to talk about, and there's so many things out there that we can cover, but we've got a really short amount of time, and I just want to show you guys some basics here. So the first is I want to make sure these dogs aren't having free reign of your house. Second, what I like to do is you know, these dogs have to go for a walk. Twice a day, every day, I always tell people these dogs need to walk, not only for exercise, but also to bleed off some nervous energy. Um, when I have our clients walk their dogs, we tell them into a working environment, um, when they're out there walking, those dogs are on the job. They're basically punching a clock. They're saying, all right, my job is I'm going to walk alongside you with a completely loose leash. I'm not stink eyeing other dogs. I'm not peeing on every bush that I see. I'm basically paying attention to the owner. What I want to do is I want to show you what I see on every day when we're out in public, uh, people walking their dog with little to no control. Um, we're going to show you Newton. He's a really feisty black German Shepherd, and I want to show you basically what's going on with this guy, and we'll talk after this, after this clip. Oh, we got it muted? Okay. Okay, so you see this guy. There's 100% tension on this leash. Um, the dog is paying attention to everything else under the sun except for his owner, and he's all over the place. So that's what we want to clean up. So, depending on the dog, there's many tools out there that you can teach a dog to walk with. Uh, for this particular dog, because it's pretty big and strong, uh, we elected to use a prong collar, which, you know, I know a lot of people out there are unsure about certain tools out there. Uh, they look like medieval torture tools, but I, I assure you, uh, when introduced and used properly, they're one of the safest and most humane training tools out there. Now, here is a clip of, this was literally about five, ten minutes later, of Newton walking like a champ. Notice this guy's arm is straight down. There's no death grip on the leash and there's complete slack on that leash and the dog is following. So his head and shoulders are basically at the owner's knee. What we want to do, you see him giving little, little correction pops there. That's for inattention. So again, he's on the clock right now working for his owner. He's not out on a rope just doing what he pleases and going anywhere he wants. When you walk a dog like this, this is a lot of work. Okay, they have to use their brain. They come home from a walk this style and they are exhausted. Um, that is a fantastic thing because everyone sees a tired dog as a good dog, but it's not always physical. I get a lot of owners out there that will tell me, hey, I took my lab for a five mile run. I brought him home. He's still insane. You walk your dog like this for 30, 45 minutes a day, they're going to come home and sleep all day long. Okay, and that's going to help alleviate a lot of anxiety and issues that we may find in the house that lead to problem behaviors. Make sense? Cool. All right. Any questions out there in the world? <laughs> All right. Okay, we do. So what I'd like to show you guys is also a little structure around feeding time. Okay. Um, when we have uh, our dogs eating, what I want, to, I never want them by my feet, begging and jumping all over the place. I want them in a calm position off to the side, waiting to be fed. Uh, I will give them a release. We like to implement what's called a no free lunch policy. So if these guys are gonna get some food or if it's something good for them, whether it's food, comfort, attention, whatever, you want that to be something they work for. Uh, work can be as simple as sitting. Think of sit as doggy please. Please may I have this food that you're providing. What I don't want is just a free for all of them running up to a buffet, getting some food, and or just diving all over you or fighting you know, all this activity around the food bowl. I want calm, okay? So what we're going to do is going to show this fine meal of uh, raw duck. Our dogs eat raw. 
and I want to show you what this what a perfect feed, feeding protocol looks like. Okay, I'm going to show you proper uh, structure around feeding time. I want the dogs in a down stay away from the food prep area. When you're ready, you call them to you. Make them work for some food. Goes down. And release the Okay. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. So what you see there is number one, the dogs are respecting your space while you prep the food. You making them earn the food by sitting or downing or roll over, or you can do whatever you want to teach them this. And then there's a pause and then there's a release to eat. Okay. So whatever they don't eat, um, you want to pick up 10 to 15 minutes. That's about all they need. And then the rest of that needs to go away. What you don't want is the buffet feeding. So in those scenarios, the dogs are self rewarding, meaning I'm hungry right now. I'm going to wander over the buffet, go grab some food. They did nothing for it and it didn't come from you. Even though you put it in the dish five hours ago, they didn't see it come from you, okay? When the dogs self-reward in a lot of these scenarios, you become a little bit less important in their lives. So if you've got a leader up here, you've got a peer somewhere down here, that's where you want to make sure that you are at the top of that pyramid, okay? Um, that's the main reason we want to have some strict food protocol. The other reason is this helps prevent things like uh, resource guarding, like food aggression and things like that. Um, and you're also keeping the energy levels low. When you have multiple dogs in the house, sometimes this is when uh, fights occur. So when you have it broken down like this and it's structured, that's when you're going to have less and less of the problems out there. Okay? Grab Luna. Get her. And just bring her right over here. So the very first thing I want to show you guys is actually how to hold the leash. So step over there. And face the Okay, so the first thing you want to do is before you even step off is you want to measure how much leash you need for your walk. Okay, so when you stand right next to the, her shoulder blades, pick a side, left or right. We usually tell people to pick a side because um, I want to give them a heel command or something to tell them that they're actually on the clock. Part of that is they know I'm going to get to this position, which is either your left or right side, which it doesn't really matter, it's, but it's better not to switch back and forth. Um, when you're standing right next to the uh, shoulder blades, with your arms down by your side, completely relaxed, um, you should see just enough leash going from her hand to her, the dog's neck with no tension. Okay, so standing right there. And you'll notice you don't want to have any death grips on the leash because, again, dogs sense tension. When you're up standing nice and calm and relaxed, and that's the position we want to be in to walk the dog. I want to give them some kind of command to let them know that they're on the clock, so a heel command, or let's go, or you could even say broccoli if you say it every single time, it doesn't matter. But the context means you're now working for me and you're now we're walking, okay? Anytime we change any major change of speed or direction, I'll reissue that command. And then uh, when we come and we just want to take them off the clock, we'll just give them a release, tell them okay. So go ahead, kill them around. And then you take her off the clock and she's free to go sniff around, pee, do whatever you want, be a dog, okay? So, again, um, there's lots of other things out there. Dogs, different dogs are going to require different amounts of training to get to this point, uh, especially with, when you're dealing with puppies, you have to teach them what leash pressure is. Again, um, the, the point of this whole first show of ours is just to basically expose you and give you some ideas to think about before, ideally, before you bring home that new puppy or dog from the shelter and you, you get home and you wonder, oh, what the heck did I just do? Um, so before things turn into pandemonium, these are a few good things you want to implement and there's a lot of information out there, um, but you want to make sure that you cross-reference everything and then we can kind of uh, assist with that. So seek out trainers um, in your area that use balance methods because again, it just really depends on what your dogs are showing you. Uh, we'll determine what type of things that we do for them, okay? So you do have a question, I do. Ray, from the live audience, okay. and they're asking, how do we get more personal training from you, like one-on-one? -on -one? Personal how training? They, how do they reach you? Yeah, you can reach us through our website, which is uh, www.korukanine.com, K-O-R-U-K-9.com. 
Uh, the koru actually stands for uh, New Beginnings. It's a New Zealand, uh, it's a symbol from, Maori symbol from New Zealand. It means New Beginnings, which we thought was appropriate for a lot of owners that uh, kind of lost their connection with their dogs due to behavioral problems or whatever. So uh, give us a call or contact us through our website and uh, we can definitely help you. We service the entire Bay Area. Um, but that's how, and if you have uh, any um, issues in the Chicago area, uh, our friends at Chicago Canine Company, Jonathan Katz, can take care of you there. And um, that's it. Do you have any other questions? Um, yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you started the business and yeah. uh, how long you've been in business and what was your passion about yeah. starting the business? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the, we rescued our dog, Luna, the one you just saw. Uh, about five years ago, and she was an absolute hot mess. Um, we were those people that went and adopted a dog, and we had no idea what we were doing, so we brought her home. She was reacting to the world because she hadn't been socialized. Um, and then we proceeded to go through several, um, several iterations of different styles of training, and um, that gave us the opportunity to see what's out there and what works and what doesn't work, and then we what we wanted to know is what would happen if we had a, a new puppy from scratch and then how to do that. So we got a new puppy. Um, his name is Nero. Um, from there, we basically, that made it our mission to make sure that he was going to be rock solid in training. Um, and then from there, I just chose to kind of mentor off some people out there. I went to training at Tar Heel Canine. I've done a lot of training with Chicago Canine Company. Um, and then... Um, this has been my life and I love my dogs and I love to see people's reactions when they think something, a dog is a lost cause, whether it's due to aggression or whatever. Um, and us being able to turn that around and keep them in their, their home and keep them happy with their dogs. So that to me is a rewarding payoff to doing what I do and I enjoy it. Yeah. And thank you guys very much for logging in. Uh, again, this is our first time. We will have others in the future. Um, we appreciate it. Log in to tootsuite.com, and uh, we'll talk to you all soon. And we're in Napa County, so we're going to enjoy some fine Napa wine at this point from Glenwood Cellars in Napa. Thank you. All right. Cheers. All right.